Today I'm going to do a video on how to uh, diagnose and repair the uh, problem I'm having with my jacuzzi hot tub. This is a J-series hot tub. Uh, it's about a 2003 year model and it's uh, I think it's a J350. Um, this same issue and problem is also a common problem on many Sundance models because the uh, many of the Sundance hot tubs use the same controller as the jacuzzi hot tub and uh, that's in part because they're owned by the same conglomerate. The um, control box down here is uh, what they call an 850 LCD control box and the only difference between this control box in here and say one in a Sundance model would be that the top side display is going to look different. This is what we call the top side display um, or top side control panel to be more correct. And uh, the other issue is you may have a difference in software programming on the EEPROM chip that's in there. But the main board itself is almost identical in all of these models. There are a few variations, for instance, on the really big uh, Sundance Optima. Um, sorry, not uh, Optima, the Sundance uh, Maximus. On the Sundance Maximus, is it Maximus or Maxis? I don't remember. It's big rectangular spots, the biggest model they made uh, during that time frame. That has a third jet pump, so that has uh, a little bit different setup on it. But uh, this particular problem that I'm going to show you now is actually uh, common across all of those jacuzzi and Sundance models. Oh, I should also add, it's also common on um, Sweetwater and uh, I forgot what the jacuzzi version of the Sweetwater line is called. But it's also common on the less expensive line that uses a LED controller. So remember I said this was an 850 LCD controller. That means that it, it uses the top side that has this liquid crystal display, which not only can display temperature, uh, it can be switched to display time, and it just gives you a lot more information and things that you can program. It's a much more sophisticated controller. The uh, LED series has a much more basic control panel and it has red LED digits for the temperature and it can just display error codes and temperature and that's pretty much it. So what the temperature display is showing is it's alternating between when I first powered it up 108 degrees it's up to 114 and OH which is the error code for overheat and if we give it a little bit more time it may quite well go to what I expect it to do, which is what it was doing last time I checked it. Well, there we go. It's up to, it's on the verge of 115, 116 degrees. What I actually expected was I expected the display to not come up at all, except for a series of dashes going across. That's the more common symptom with, for this particular problem, is a line of dashes going across. What that line of dashes means is it means that the hot tub is what, uh, what the manufacturer calls watchdog mode. It means that one of the two temperature sensors, which I'll get to in a moment, has sensed a extremely high temperature situation and the spa has been completely shut down. Now, uh, in this particular case right here, it's important to note that I haven't had this spa on for days. It's only about 50 degrees today because it's, you know, it's fall weather and the water is plenty cool. If this water were in fact 118 degrees, which is what it's now reading, I wouldn't be able to hold my hand in here very long. So this is an important clue to help you determine what the underlying fault is that's causing this problem. And it's more important when it's in watchdog and you're not getting an error code. Here we've got something that's really telling us a, a story here. It's telling us, hey, it thinks the water is 118 degrees and it says OH. This thing thinks the water is cooking hot. Remember I said that if it's in watchdog mode, that can be caused by one of two sensors. There's watchdog right there. So let's pretend we didn't have that clue. And let's pretend we just turn it on and, or you come up to your hot tub and you discover it's doing this. Well, if everything was working normally and it did this, the first thing you should do is reset the spa. 
should shut your circuit breaker off, wait for about 10 seconds for the capacitors to lose their charge, and turn the spa back on. You basically, you're, it's kind of like you're rebooting the system. And when you do that, sometimes that will solve your problem. Usually it doesn't. But every once in a while you'll get a power surge or a glitch, something that just kind of makes the computer go a little wacko. And this thing will basically be reset by rebooting it. In this particular case, that's not what's going to happen. However, if you have a person handy that can flip the breaker for you, it's not a bad idea to um, have somebody shut the breaker off and then you watch the display when it powers up. I'll show you why. All right, kill the power. All right, turn it back on. All right, so once again, we've got quite a bit of time before it's going to go into Watchdog. Oftentimes, though, it goes into Watchdog almost immediately. But if you're watching the display when you first power it up, sometimes you can catch a glimpse of the temperature that it's, it's measuring before it goes into Watchdog. And if it shows you that temperature, and the temperature is excessively high, and you know the water is cold, then that means that the temperature sensor is malfunctioning. And the temperature sensor... There's two of them, one on the heater and there's one in the spa. The one on the heater is not responsible for telling you what the temperature of the water is. The one in the spa is. So by seeing that this temperature is way out of whack, say 118 when it's not really 118, that tells us that it's not the temp sensor on the heater. The temp sensor on the heater on these things is only there it's a safety feature. If the water were to start boiling in the heater due to a malfunction, it shuts the heater down for protection. You can actually have the water in the spa not even get hot and have a fault that can cause that to happen. That's another story. It's very rare. And the temp sensors on those heaters almost never go bad. My theory for the reason why those almost never go bad is because those are never in contact with the water in the spa in any way shape or form they are strapped usually to the outside of the, the stainless steel housing of the heaters but the temperature sensor that's responsible for measuring the water temperature in the spa on jacuzzi models and sundance models it's located in the filter well now on your sundance model you may have a horizontal filter, a large, huge horizontal filter, but it's still going to be, that temperature sensor is going to still be down in that filter well, and it's going to look very similar. So that gray device right down there, that is the temperature sensor. That's actually like the second generation of these that I've seen. The earliest version of that sensor, the hexagonal part that looks like a nut, is actually longer. Then they went to this design, um, and the color was a little bit different than that one. That's gray. It's faded from chemicals, but that was gray. The one prior to that, I think, had almost like a cream color to it. Then they went to this gray color, and then they changed the design. They had a ton of failures with these, and they changed the design again. They changed the design again to a um, basically an all-metal temperature probe that is a little cylindrical device that sits in the middle of a plastic plug that screws into that. That's actually screwed in there. and We'll, we'll cover that during replacement. So not just for a little quick technical mumbo jumbo. What that device actually is, is it's actually a component called a thermistor. And what it does is it has a specific electrical resistance for a specific temperature. So as the water temperature changes, the electrical resistance of that component changes. So what the controller is designed to do is the, the controller is designed to look at that electrical resistance that's coming in from the connections going to that thermistor and it determines based on what it sees for electrical resistance it determines what to display here as a temperature. So how does it fail? Why is it doing what it's doing? Well what's happened is something has caused that device to fail in a way where its electrical resistance has changed quite a bit. And if it, if it had changed completely open, 
then the system would probably sense that and you would probably get what's called an SN1 error, which means uh, that sensor number one has failed. But they almost never fail that way. They almost always fail this way where they go out of range. So right now, its electrical resistance is corresponding to 118 degree water or so, even though this water is cool. I mean, it's probably about the temperature of the air right now, around 50 degrees, maybe even a little lower. So that's what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to order a brand new temperature sensor, and it's going to correct this problem. And uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty easy repair. And it's not a cheap repair if you have to rely on a authorized technician to come out and repair. The important thing to know about that sensor is that you can go online and if you just Google Sundance temperature sensor or Jacuzzi temperature sensor, you're going to get a whole bunch of sensors that are going to come up from a whole bunch of different vendors that are all going to look like that sensor. But one of the key things that you need to know is that this is the LCD model and the way that the wires from that sensor connect. So the, uh, remember I talked about how you can get the watchdog where you get the dashes on the red LED readout on the, um, like the Bahias, uh, the Sundance Bahias and some of the uh, lower end jacuzzi models. It's the same sensor, but the difference is the way that it connects to the board. What they do, for whatever reason, is they chose to use a different type of connector that plugs onto the board. So on this style, the LCD series, they use what's called a box connection on the end because the sensor goes into a plug that doesn't just have that one sensor. The sensor goes into a plug that contains the high limit sensor on the heaters wiring, the wiring for the temp sensor we just talked about, the wiring for the flow switch, and uh, I think there might be a couple other things on there. So long story short, you've got to actually reuse the plug that's in here, and you're just going to get a sensor with two wires on it, and at the end of those wires, the little metal connectors are going to be different for the two different types. So this is what they call the box type, where it's actually a tiny little square tube of brass that's crimped onto the end of each wire. Whereas on the um, LED models, they use what I think they call the finger type, which is two flat little pieces of metal crimped onto the end of the wire that are actually kind of rolled over like a hook, like this, and they've got a little detent so that when they are slid into the connector, they snap in. Uh, so it's a little bit different deal. So let's get that uh, temp sensor ordered. And when I come back to finish this job, uh, it'll seem like time passed magically. Now with the spa drain, you can really see the uh, temperature sensor. I've also removed the filters to give me more access. Now you don't have to drain the spa to change this temperature sensor. Uh, what you can do is, because of the design, this actually screws into a fitting on the back side of the shell here that's attached to a flexible PVC hose. The flexible PVC hose runs up into the equipment compartment. I'll show you that in a moment. But what that allows you to do is that allows you to actually be able to remove this and change it while the spa still has water in it. What I usually do is I'll unscrew this this one's so loose it's actually just unscrewing by hand. I'll unscrew it and some water will start leaking past this and down that hose. Of course you want to make sure the hose isn't dumping water on something critical like the control box. Usually it's nowhere near it. Once I get it loose like this I then usually take a rag and I pull this out with one hand and wrap the rag around here and then stuff the rag into this hole. I've even 
on some occasions I've even been able to hold my finger in there while I do this if I have everything set to go up ahead of time. The good thing is that in the equipment compartment there's plenty of extra wire. So here's what that hose looks like. Now that hose is just hanging loose. So right now if I had unscrewed the sensor like I did with water in the tub, water would be flowing out of there at a pretty good clip. So if I actually hold that hose up high underneath the underside of the deck of the fiberglass body of the tub so that that outlet is above the, wa the water line in the tub, water will stop flowing out of that. So that's another thing you can do if you've got uh, the ability to just hold it up there or tie it up there in, in some fashion. It really depends on the particular situation. Uh, different model tubs will have this hose in different locations. So you just got to kind of look for, you know, you know that the filter uh, housing is where the temperature sensor is located. So just think about the most logical way to route the thing and you should be okay. In most cases, there are some exceptions like uh, I think the Maxis tub uh, that really big sucker that Sundance makes. If memory serves me, I, I want to say I think that hose runs underneath the tub uh, way down low. I've even seen situations where the during the manufacturing process when they spray in this foam, this foam that fills in a lot of the cavity, um, the chemical reaction is, uh, I believe it's exothermic, meaning that it gives off a lot of heat and I've actually seen some cases where it actually gave off enough heat to deform the hose. And the problem is it can actually cause the hose to almost squash down. And that can be a problem because then the, uh, the thing can get kind of tight when you're trying to snake the new cable through. So here's the main control box. And here's the main PC board. Now you never ever want to open up this control box and have your hands anywhere near the inside of this thing with the circuit breaker on. You need the main circuit breaker to be off. I can't stress enough how dangerous it could be for you to be poking around in here if you do not know what you're doing. Not that I had any doubt, but right up here in the corner you can see where it says that it's an 850 LCD board. Made in China. So at the top center of the board there's a large plug that has several red and black wires going to it. That's the combination plug that we need to remove that actually uh, has the two temperature sensors and the flow switch going to it. So you got to be careful not to break this. The design of this is pretty straightforward. It's these tabs on the side here and you flip them out. See how I just push that out a little bit? That allows that little plastic piece right there to unlock the back of the um, back of the pl plug. So I'm going to do the same on the other one. And by design they actually have a lifting feature so that they're actually pulling out that plug as I push them, back, push them out. So now that I've got the plug out, if we look carefully at the plug, there's actually a little black raised piece of plastic in the middle right there. That little black raised piece of plastic is what determines how this plug goes back in. So you can't put it in upside down. It only goes in one way. If you try and force it the wrong way, you're going to break something. So you got to be careful. When you're putting this back in, take note of that, the fact that this little ridge has to face up. If I follow these three wires on this jacuzzi model, all three wires actually exit the control box out the left hand side here. On many Sundance models, one of these wires will not exit the control box. It will actually go over to the, to the right side because on many models, the Sundance style heater is actually mounted to the side of the control box and there's a hole for that to go to the high limit sensor, temperature sensor on the actual heater itself. Here, they all exit here. This little thin one right here at the top, this is going over in the back to where the jacuzzi style heater is actually attached. The other two, which are for the flow switch and for the temperature sensor that we're dealing with, they go over to this mess over here and are tied or just bound together by a wire tie. By cutting that wire tie, that allows us to separate 
the two so we can figure out which one is which. One is going over to the flow switch and the other goes to our temperature sensor. So if I go back over to the temperature sensor and pull on the wire, I've determined that it's this one. So it's this one right here. So if I'm looking at the plug from the back side, the SPAS temperature sensor is the two holes all the way to the far right. The next two holes over are going to be the high limit sensor. And then there's a space where there are two holes unused. And then these two wires right in the middle that go in that middle set of holes are for the flow switch. Then we get another space. Then we have a jumper that goes from the top hole to the bottom hole diagonally. So what I need to do next is I need to separate this wire, these two little wires from this plastic plug because this plastic plug gets reused. Well, it's fall in New England, so it gets dark pretty early now. So I've set up uh, my LED light. Hopefully this will help give you a better look at this plug. So again, here's that little raised area I was talking about. That's going to determine which way this plug goes in. So again, we're dealing with this furthest one to the outside. And the way you get these wires out, or these little connectors, these little box connectors out is, you need a very sharp, small instrument that can get into this little slot right here and push in on the little metal piece that sticks up. And once they're out, it'll become evident what I'm talking about. So a small blade precision screwdriver, small enough that will fit into this slot, will do the trick. Um, in a pinch, you can use a uh, sewing needle. I've done that before. So you don't have to push very hard on this. If you're doing it right, it'll just slide right out. And I flip it over and I do the other one. Notice these are red and black. Well, don't get hung up on that. There's no polarity here. The thermistor is a very, you know, it's a resistor that just varies with temperature change. And it does not have polarity. It's not like positive and negative that you have to worry about. They could have used all the same color wire, but for whatever reason, they did it this way. All right, so I pull that out through the strain relief. Now let's see if we can't get the camera to focus so we can get a better look at these little box ends. All right, so... If we were to look at these head-on, they're actually hollow little brass tubes. And they're square in shape, which is why they've got the name box. And then there's a little tiny metal tang. What that does is that little metal tang actually springs up so that if we were to slide this back into the plastic slot, when it gets to that opening, the tang pops up into that, and that's what locks this in. Now, sometimes they get bent down a little bit and they don't uh, they don't want to click in so like if you get the new sensor in and you put this in and it doesn't click in and lock in then you gotta very carefully bend that tang up a little bit without breaking it you also have to make sure that that tang is facing up when you install it so remember I said that they give you quite a bit of extra wire which is great it's going to help us install the new one. Here's what the newest version of the temp sensor looks like. It's got these uh, little like indentations in the plastic, the way it's molded. But more importantly, you can actually see the end of the sensor, the end of the, the, end of the probe, stainless steel. So what they've done is now they've got basically the sensor is completely encapsulated in a stainless steel jacket. And then that is injection molded. Uh, this plastic piece is injection molded around that. So instead of... In the old system, what would happen is you'd get 
cracks in this plastic that would allow water to get in and get to the actual electronic component in there. Now, even if this cracks, the stainless steel jacket is the line of defense. So in preparation for installing it, I'm gonna put a new O-ring on here. I am not uh, too proud to admit that on more than one occasion when doing this job for a customer, I went through all the trouble of, of uh, running the wire through the piping and getting it all set and then realizing that I forgot to put the new O-ring on and having to basically pull it all out and do it again. The O-ring is a separate part number, by the way, so when you're ordering the sensor, don't expect it to come with a new O-ring. Ready to go. So I uh, unscrew the old sensor and pull it part way out. I'm now going to cut off the sensor off the original cable because we're going to use the original cable to snake the new wire back through the pipe. On this particular model we're only going from there over to this corner really so it's only a couple of feet of tubing that the pipe has to that the uh, wire has to be snaked through so that's pretty easy all right so i finished install, installing the sensor and uh again it's really easy if you have uh, another person that could help you you can actually have somebody feed the wire in through the opening over here as somebody gently pulls on the wire coming out it makes it a lot easier to make the install go a lot faster and with pretty much zero chance of the uh the two cables you put together with tape separating. Also, with two people, you don't have to uh, you don't have to drain the tub because uh, you can basically hold a, a cloth or something around the opening that lets the wire slide the cable slide through as the other person pulls on it. Now I've rerouted the cable back, generally the same area where it was before, over to the left side behind the box and over to the left side, and I'm going to um, wrap up a lot of the excess cable that I don't need and just put a little wire tie on it. Now it's time to install these little boxed end connectors back into the main connector on the PC board. So what I've done is I've bent out this little metal tab right there. There's a little metal tab. I've bent that out just the tiniest bit. So what will happen is when I insert this into the connector that little tab is going to spring out and pop into an opening on the plastic and that's what locks this into position. But before I connect it to the plastic connector I need to route it through the hole in the side here. Uh, um, I've actually in the past I've <laughs> forgot about routing it, hooked it up to the connector and then realized oops can't get the cover on because well. <laughs> Alright so I uh, got my wire tire on, tie on this uh, extra cabling and I've routed it through the connector, uh, the uh, opening on the side of the box, and now I need to insert these back into their proper positions on this connector, which in this case are these last two holes with that little ridge of plastic facing up. It's the last two holes on the right, and it doesn't matter if the red is in the top or, on, or the black. Uh, you can do it either way. The critical part of this step is making sure that little metal tab that I just showed you is facing in the direction of the hole. So you see those little holes? That's where that little metal tab needs to pop up into. So the one, the one that I'm going to insert in the top hole, the tab has to face up. And then on the back side you see more holes. So the one I insert in the bottom hole, the tab's going to have to face down. When I insert the wire, uh, when you're inserting that wire, if you do it very slowly and carefully, you can sometimes even hear a little click. You have to make sure that when you go to plug this in, it, go, it can only go in one way. You need that little plastic nub area right in the middle there to be facing up, meaning all four sensor wires, the two sensor wires you just installed and the two sensor wires for the high limit sensor will all be on that right hand side. So again, I inserted this with the plastic nub facing up. You gently insert it straight in and as you do so, it will cause these two plastic pieces on the side to swing inward. 
Once you get it fully seated, you can then push these in and they will click. Actually, clicks right in. Make sure those are both clicked in so that the plug can't work its way back out. If you drained your spa to do this repair and now you're ready to refill it, here's a tip on refilling. Consider taking your filter out. Whether it's a Sundance or a Jacuzzi spa, it doesn't matter what design your filter is. Take the filter out and insert the hose to refill the spa directly into the larger opening on the filter. That tends to make sure that water filling the hot tub actually fills through the plumbing as it's filling the rest of the tub and that will help displace air pockets that might get trapped in the plumbing. It will actually help the spa restart and uh, minimize the amount of air trapped in the system. All right, water level's high enough, ready to turn it on. Now, because it's a fresh fill, when I turn this on, I fully expect the temperature, once it stabilizes, to show a reading of about 50 degrees. I'm gonna have my son turn it on so that we can actually watch exactly what it does. It's gonna go through a little quick self-test and then hopefully it'll stabilize. Go ahead. go it's heating 52 degrees so that takes care of that problem oh, I've actually got the other pump disconnected still because I was working on a problem with that anyways uh, so now we're we're working correctly if you notice at first it was showing a flow error the reason why it was showing a flow error was because there was some air in the uh, circulation pump system and the heater circuit and that would cause the uh, the lack of flow which would give the flow error the other thing you probably saw is the ice and cool it's alternating ice will show when the actual temperature of the water is a certain amount of degrees below the set temperature so the set temperature is 90 well, i just hit it it was 93 so because i've got it set to 93 but the actual temperature is only 52 the system is showing an ice error once the temperature starts getting close enough to the uh, set temperature, the ice error will go away and the cool error will, come, will continue to stay on. And then, of course, eventually, the temperature will reach the set temperature of 93 or 94 degrees, and both of those errors will go away. So it's heating, it's running, everything's looking good. Okay, so this is going to conclude this video on how to diagnose and replace the temperature sensor on a jacuzzi or Sundance hot tub. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you like watching videos on repair of all different types of things, whether it be lawnmowers, generators, hot tubs, or if you like tool videos where people go out and find deals on tools, especially machinist tools, or if you just like seeing old vintage equipment being used, like lathes from the 1900s early 1900s anyways please consider subscribing that's all for now take care